Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Point Blank Podcast. I'm your host, Reformed Bad Boy Dryden Joss. Today is Halloween, and I hope you are having a blessed Monday morning. For those of you who are on your way to work, drive safely. Today is Halloween, but to those who understand and who it matters, and I am one of those persons being a Reformed Bad Boy, today is Reformation Day. I'm going to explain a little bit about Reformation today, what that entails, what exactly is so important about this day, specifically Reformation Day. And I'm going to get into that. But first, I just kind of want to explain uh, what my church did for it. So we celebrated Reformation Day on Sunday, immediately following church. We had a, we went, we made a whole day of it. We had an orchestra playing during the service. We were singing uh, great songs such as A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And afterwards, the entire church congregation, which is with... Visitors, including probably about 350 people or so, maybe a little bit more. Uh, It's hard to count when every single family has, on average, I'm not even joking, in this church, eight kids, on average. I, I, I think that's what we're at right now. There's a lot of children there, and it's great. It's such a blessing. Um, after church, we had a great time eating food, uh, playing games, playing tug of war. There was dancing. There was. Uh, Old men smoking cigars and drinking whiskey. There was, uh, what are those things called? Bounce houses for all the children who are running around. There was so many babies. I think I held probably three or four different babies. Uh, It is such a joyful event, full of life. Uh, Everyone there being pro-life, obviously, and everyone there having so many babies and kids. Even the men get in on the action and love their children. It's very good. It's very healthy. And you don't typically see that in our current culture. From my experience, what I've noticed is a lot of people, even Christian men, or at least acclaimed Christian men, will tell me that they don't want children. They don't want a lot of children. Uh, Someone even told me recently that they want three children at most just because they're concerned about the money. And I could go on a very long tangent about why you shouldn't worry about the money. I know that is difficult In practice, simple enough in concept, but if you read Philippians 4 and Matthew 6, you understand that we are really not supposed to worry because God takes care of his children. What he requires is day-by-day faith and obedience. That's as simple as it gets. So, children really are a blessing. I have a whole entire podcast on why children are such a blessing and why I'm a huge advocate for life, for pro-life, for actually birthing babies and raising those children up in the faith. Uh, but church today was simply wonderful. It was a great, great time. It feels like a living, breathing church body. Um, you can feel the presence of the Lord there because he is there. He lives and dwells in each, every single one of us. Um, we know that our bodies are the temple of the Holy spirit. And because of that, we are called to repent, confess our sin and then obey. And we are to sacrifice ourselves and our selfish desires for the sake of everyone else, um, especially those of us in our family. Um, Reformation Day, what we're inherently celebrating is uh, the Reformation. And it all started with Martin Luther, but I'm going to read this. This is from Ligonier Ministries. And this was actually posted two days ago. It says, what is Reformation Day all about? by Robert Rothwell. So I'm going to read this entire article because it's pretty short. On October 31st, much of the culture will be focused on candy and things that go bump in the night. Protestants, however, have something far more significant to celebrate on October 31st. It's Reformation Day, which commemorates what was perhaps the greatest move of God's spirit since the days of the apostles. But what is the significance of the Reformation Day and how should we consider the events it commemorates? At the time, few would, have suspect, uh, few would have suspected that the sound of a hammer striking the castle church door in Wittenberg, Germany, would soon be heard around the world and lead ultimately to the greatest transformation of Western society since the apostles first preached the gospel throughout the Roman Empire. Martin Luther's nailing of his 95 theses to the church door on October 31st, 1517, provoked a debate that culminated culminated finally in what we now call the Protestant Reformation. Luther recaptured the biblical view of the priesthood of all believers, showing all people that their work had purpose and dignity because 
in it they can serve their creator. In heir of the Bishop Augustine of Hippo, Martin Luther is one of the most significant figures God has raised up since that time. This law student turned Augustinian monk became the center of great controversy after his theses were copied and distributed throughout Europe. Initially protesting the Pope's attempt to sell salvation, Luther's study of scripture soon led him to oppose the Church of Rome on issues including the uh, primacy of the Bible over church tradition and the means by which we are found righteous in the sight of God. So keep in mind, a little bit of backstory, the Catholic Church was selling salvation and they were explaining that the way to get to heaven was through good works, which we know is not true, that uh, salvation is through faith alone. The last issue is probably Luther's most significant contribution to Christian theology. Uh, Though preached clearly in the New Testament and found in the writings of many of the church fathers, the medieval bishops and priests had largely forgotten the truth that our own good works can by no means merit God's favor. Salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, and good works result from our faith. They are not added to it as the grounds for our right standing in the Lord's eye. We read that in Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. Justification, God's declaration that we are not guilty, forgiven of sin, and righteousness in his sight comes because through our faith alone, the Father imputes or reckons on, uh, to our account the perfect righteousness of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Martin Luther's rediscovery of this truth led to a whole host of other church and societal reforms, and much of what we take for granted in the West would have been likely impossible had he never graced the scene. Luther's translation of the Bible into German put the word of God in the hands of the people, and today's scripture is available in the vernacular language of many countries, enabling lay people to study it with profit. He reformed the Latin Mass by putting the liturgy in the common tongue so that non-scholars could hear and understand the preached word of God and worship the Lord with clarity. Luther lifted the unbiblical ban on marriage for the clergy and by his own teaching example radically transformed the institution itself. He recaptured the biblical view of the priesthood of all believers, showing all people that their work had purpose and dignity because in it they can serve their creator. Today, Luther's legacy lives on in the creeds and confessions of Protestant bodies worldwide. As we consider his importance this Reformation Day, let us equip ourselves to be knowledgeable proclaimers and defenders of biblical truth. May we be eager to preach the gospel of God to the world and thereby spark a new reformation of church and culture. I want to give a little bit of backstory of what Luther did. He was a monk, as we just read. The the language of the Bible, I believe back then, was in Latin. And the typical German guy didn't read Latin. He read and spoke German. That's what he had. He had German. So all of these Catholic priests were reading the Bible in very uh, twisted and manipulative ways, or maybe not at all. But the lay person, meaning just your normal person on the street, really genuinely thought because what he had been told is that salvation was through works and through purchasing it, spending money, and then you could get to go to heaven. And that's not true. Martin Luther doing this was very bold to write 95 theses and explain how biblically what these priests were doing was wrong. And because of that, now we have Protestantism, which if you are a reformed Protestant, like I am, a, uh, I'm a little bit further than a Presbyterian because I believe in pedo communion, which Presbyterians do not, at least according to PCA. I think Westminster is wrong on, I think the Westminster, I don't even know if it touches the subject of pedo communion. Uh, it might. It might be the larger catechism. I'm not really sure. I need to reread that. Basically, Reformed theology essentially boils down to we believe what the Bible says and nothing more. The Catholic Church and I believe parts of Greek Orthodoxy still have a oral tradition. They say, oh, this is what the apostles said and people kept saying that oral tradition And that's why they believe some of the things that they believe. Catholics believe that you can pray uh, to Mary. They believe that you can pray to other saints on on their behalf. Uh, They believe a lot of other things that are wrong, but they get that through oral tradition. Now, oral tradition, I think if we were 
to be very logical about it and take our feelings away from it and think about it for a little bit, I think we would recognize that oral tradition is very similar to a game of telephone. Game of telephone where you play with your friends, where you whisper into someone's ear and then they whisper into the next person's ear and then they whisper into the next person's ear and so on and so forth until you get a phrase or a word that is nothing like what the original word was or phrase, the original sentence. That is what oral tradition is. Uh, something closely related to this, again, the fact that Protestantism, or at least Reformed Protestant, Protestant that's a hard word to say, uh, Reformed theology boils down to we just believe what the Bible says. And we translate the Bible and we interpret the Bible with other Bible passages. We use the Bible to interpret the Bible. People think that the Bible is one book, but it's actually 66 books uh, written by 40 authors over the course of 2,000 years. So it's not simply one book, but we can definitely use the book to, to interpret other parts of the book. Deuteronomy 13, this is closely related to uh, this oral tradition or this game of telephone, the way I'm describing it. A uh, little bit different, but I think the thought still counts. Deuteronomy 13, if a prophet or dreamer of dreams arises among you and gives you a sign or a wonder and the sign or wonder that he tells you comes to pass. And if he says, let us go after other gods, which you have not known and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of the prophet or the dreamer of dreams for the Lord. Your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord, your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord, your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And you shall serve him and hold fast to him. But that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has taught rebellion against the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of slavery to make you to leave the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. So we see there in that passage, Deuteronomy 13 again, uh, that if anyone claims to be a prophet or claims to have dreams of the Lord and uh, special teachings. But if it goes against scripture, if it goes against what God has taught, we are to get rid of that guy, get him out of the mist, purge the evil from among you. Uh, let's see if I can off the top of my head find another similar. Yeah, here we go. This is Revelation 22. Revelation 22, this is also similar in vain. I warn, this is verse 18. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God will take away his share of the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord be Jesus be with us all. Amen. Uh, so similar in vain, you know, we don't want to add to scripture. And so what a lot of these acclaimed Christian religions, such as Catholicism, and I think I'm like 90% sure Greek Orthodoxy is they have a lot of oral tradition. And we know from scripture that we have to be very careful when someone says that they have, uh, even the Pentecostal people say this, they'll say, I have a word from God. I think the only time realistically that we can have a word from God is when we read it from the word of God, when we read it from the Bible. If I just get a random thought in my head and claim that it's Jesus talking to me, if it goes against scripture, then it's not God talking to me. It's very simple. So all this to say the reformation was a great thing we got the word of god we got it back into the hands of the common people so that they can read it this is something that we should practice even today even if you have a trusted pastor you need to be reading scripture for your own self if someone says something about the bible you need to go back to scripture and make sure that they're correct if i reform bad boy dryden joss say something about the word of god say something about scripture even if i say something uh, against sin, or if I, I make a bold claim about the Bible, or if I say something like there should be no woman pastors or homosexuality is wrong, the only way that you can prove I'm wrong is if you can prove I'm wrong biblically. 
if you can go back to what the Bible says, because we know that the Bible, we know that all scriptures God breathed and profitable for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training up in righteousness. If you can go back to the Bible and prove me wrong from the Bible instead of your feelings or instead of society or culture, then I would change my mind. Our end goal in our sanctification is to be like Christ. We can get there through meditating on the word day and night. That means twice a day. And a lot of people don't even do it once a day. Have you read your Bible recently? Probably not. I'm just being honest. I mean, so many Christians I know don't read their Bible daily. So you have to understand Reformation is so important because the Bible was put back into the hands of the common man in their own language. Right now, you have the easiest access in all of history to the Bible. I have the Bible here physically, hashtag physical Bible gang, and I have my Bible on my phone. And then I have another Bible right over here that I'm just, I just have ready to give to anyone who doesn't have a Bible. God spoke to man. He spoke through man. And then he came to earth as a man and spoke to us. And we know, I, I, I know so many Christians that say, I just want to hear God talk to me. If only it was special and God spoke to me. If God could talk to me, that would be amazing. I want to hear his voice. That's not the way it works. And it's because we are supposed to have a little bit of faith. But basically, we have God's word. We don't have to go searching for it. It's right here in front of us. But sometimes we are just too lazy to read about it. But that's the importance of the Reformation. We are getting back to the truth. And the truth can be heard or learned by a common person such as you and me. Uh, a lot of comments I get on, the YouTube, on this channel which is so funny. Oh, by the way, I'm on Rumble now. So if anyone's watching on Rumble, please hit that Rumble button, I guess. Um, I get so many comments that say, you're just a guy. Who do, you, who do you think you are? What makes you think you know everything about the Bible? Um, I'll humbly admit that I am not a master when it comes. I'm not a priest. I'm not a pastor. But I am a guy who knows how to read, and I know how to learn, and I know how to be wrong sometimes. I have elders that tell me I'm wrong on an issue, and I've had to learn and grow. There's probably, maybe, to an extent, some things that I've said on this YouTube channel before that maybe I've changed my opinion on. Now, when it comes to the basics, such as what is sin, you know, homosexuality, transgenderism, uh, women pastors, I'm not changing on that. I'm not budging on that. But maybe there's some things that I, I could change on. Um Maybe some things I would say in a much nicer way. But I'm just a guy who knows how to read. And anyone watching this video, I would say roughly half of you who are actually nice and know how to put together a grammatically correct sentence, you know how to read too. You're literate people. Now, half the people who watch this channel and leave terrible comments, you're very illiterate. You're kind of, you're actually all very stupid. You're very dumb. Uh, and I think you need to hear that. Because you're not as special as your parents say you are. You're really not. So, uh, learn to read. Learn how to read properly. Stop saying like and um and but in your sentences. Stop saying you know. Get rid of your tick words. I'm rambling at this point, but I want to explain that today is a very important day that is getting overlooked because it's also Halloween. That's okay. It's really okay. But I want you guys to take a step back. Let's just breathe a little bit. Let's breathe in and out. And think about your life. What is it you're longing for? Are you seeking truth? Are you seeking truth or are you seeking validation for your feelings? Think about that. Because I know where to find truth. You can find it in the Word of God. You can find it in the Bible. You can find it in the wise words of a mentor. You can find it at church. But if you're just seeking affirmation, you will never get enough to overcome the bad feeling you feel. All right, I'm going to move on. In a similar context, uh, this comes from Daily Wire. It says, CBS predicts the Republican House takeover in latest poll. The latest CBS Bat, uh, battleground tracker poll estimates that Republicans will gain at least 15 seats in the House of Representatives in the upcoming midterm elections. The poll predicts the GOP will control 228 seats compared to the Democrats' 207. The latest projection within a margin of error of plus or minus 12 seats is based on a similar model used by the poll that accurately predicted the 2018 midterm election outcomes. 
blah, blah, blah. Um, if elections were Congress were held today, 49% of likely U.S. voters would choose Republican candidate, while 42% would vote for Democrat. Just 4% would vote for some other candidate, but another 5% are not sure. Okay. That's so silly that people answer a poll by saying, I don't know. Just pick one. Just be decisive. Know what you want. Herschel Walker will win Georgia. Uh, Oz is going to win against Fetterman in Pennsylvania. Adam Laxalt will win Nevada. But I have every reason to believe we can pick up with Blake Masters in Arizona and Don Bolduc in New Hampshire. Republicans must get to at least 51 seats to break the current 50-50 tie in the Senate. Democrats currently hold power in the chamber as the vice president holds the tie-breaking vote. So I think this is uh, good news. You know, we had a little bit of a scare. We had this idea that the red wave might not happen, but it looks like it's actually going to happen. I've already voted. I voted locally in my local elections, and I've also voted for my congressman. Voted early uh, just so I could get it done. So that's from a conservative news site. But let's go to CNN, which is obviously a very leftist communist site. I just want to read. This is from an article called This is the Late Message Some Democrats Believe Could Make a Difference in Close Elections. So just a little bit of an overview. Democrats are very scared right now. They're scared that they're going to lose power. And it's, it's true. They're going to lose power. And it's because they have used their power to crush people, crush businesses, spend all our money, raise uh, just spend so much money, print a lot of money, inflation's bad, gas prices are bad, they're shutting down American commerce, we're giving so much money to Ukraine for no reason, because we have no business being in Ukraine at all, I think a bunch of soldiers just went over to Ukraine, I need to read up on that, uh, the Democrats are a disaster, they're so focused on pushing uh, abortion and transgenderism, and recently last week, I didn't cover it in the podcast, but uh, Biden was hanging out with our main man, Dan, uh, Dylan Mulvaney, who is a man pretending to be a little girl, and now he has boobs. I saw a video about that. That was disgusting. He's shaking his titties and laughing about how he forgets he has boobs. It doesn't make any sense. He, he Sidetrack, side note. He said he opened the door with his chest exposed because he forgot he had breasts, which, you know, he's like a half an A cup at best. I've seen other dudes with bigger titties. Anyway, I wanted to read this part of the CNN article. But in close elections, some Democrats believe this late push may be enough to make the difference. Okay, so they have a new strategy. Even as they worry that the voter intimidation takeovers of local election authorities and expected legal challenges may have already put them behind. Several Democrats have been running ads that directly or indirectly try to tie their opponents to... January 6 were the kinds of election conspiracy theories that led the mob of Trump supporters storming the U.S. Capitol. But those haven't been the focus of any 2022 campaign, even as some GOP nominees across the country have embraced those kind of election falsehoods. Some groups, however, have been taking the democracy message to the streets. Black PAC, whatever that is, a Democratic-leaning political group, says it already knocked on 2 million doors of black voters over the past year across Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Nevada. All states with a pivotal statewide and U.S. Uh, House races with a not-at-all subtle line. Quote, even though we turned out in record numbers in 2020, they still tried to throw out our votes in places like Detroit, Philadelphia, and Atlanta, read the script given to organizers and shared with CNN, referring to Republican challenges in certain areas, the 2020 presidential election results. That message will be amplified in the next two weeks online and on radio stations catering to black audiences. Um, let's see. I'm going to scroll down a little bit, keep reading. Uh... Even President Joe Biden, after delivering a red-lit speech last month about the midterm elections as a, quote, battle for the soul, unquote, of democracy, has mostly moved from that theme, keeping his midterm closing arguments focused on warnings about the economic consequences of Republicans in charge and making only a passing reference to Democrats protecting their very democracy. So I'm trying to figure out. I think they're stepping away from the January 6th stuff because it doesn't seem that that's really working. 
So I don't know what is working anymore. The Democrats, they they can't run on anything because everything that they run on sucks. They run on LGBTQ, which is not popular and has always been under 2% of the nation no matter what. And that's being very generous with those numbers. They run on abortion, which is popular, but not as popular as the economy and inflation. That is the main concern of Americans. That is the main concern of American families who have to pay for gas and have to pay for their children. That is what matters, not January 6th, not abortion, not transgenderism and LGBTQ events. It's not popular, and it's not popular worldwide. So let's see. Quote, it just shows us the danger that our democracy is in, unquote, Bayes told CNN. And quote, it also makes me angry thinking of my Republican colleagues who attempt to minimize what happened on January 6th and who ignored the hate speech, the violent speech that is going on right now, unquote. Here's what happened on January 6th, just to set the record straight. On January 6th, President Trump literally said, let's march to the Capitol peacefully. Let's peacefully do that. And he specifically said, let's not be violent. We're not going to be violent. And then I think a bunch of undercover Antifa members and undercover federal agents who did not get charged, even though we know their name, pushed people on. And, uh, instigated people into storming the Capitol. And we have footage of police officers opening the doors and opening the gates and opening their velvet ropes and letting people walk in calmly. Where the senators weren't even there. So this whole January 6th thing, they have milked this dry and it's not working. And I think the average American is smart enough to see this. Um, that's really all I got for you guys today. I hope you have a blessed day. You know, go out, trick or treat. I'm not one of those Christians that hates Halloween. I think, you know, free candy and dressing up. It, that's not a sin. That's not a sin. So just use discretion with your costumes. Don't dress like a slut. Don't dress your kid up in something super violent and you should be okay. Enjoy this day. Enjoy the Reformation. Read your Bible. Remember the fact that God wrote this down so that you could read it to hear his voice. Um, study it. Memorize it. Meditate on it day and night. and You should be okay. I've got two videos coming out very soon. They're being edited right now. But one video is where I ask basic Bible trivia to a bunch of college students at Liberty University. That should be very fun. The second video I just filmed... Yesterday, actually, uh, me and cameraman Jack were over at a drag show in a local small town around here. I live in the country, and drag has reached even the small country towns. It was a quote-unquote family-friendly event. Children under 12 got on free, and it was absolutely packed. So I got a lot of good content of that show, and I'm going to explain why it is detestable and disgusting. It's an abomination what is going on. That is a video shortly to come. So look out for those two videos. They're going to be on YouTube and Rumble. Um, those will be out soon. All right, let's get to the comment section. Blood Sparrow 246 says, I have an argument. I'm gay. What are you going to do about it? Go on, fight back. You know, th this comment is just so retarded. Like, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> let's see. Adrian like... Chef Fife says, based in Red Pilled. Thanks. Katie Lanes says, I understand where you're coming from and the point you're trying to get across, but I will say my interest in your per, uh, point of view and this video as a whole went away as soon as you started with the Biden references. It's been well documented that he is a practicing Catholic with a strong belief in God. Okay. As the leader of the free world... I would hope that my president doesn't use his religion and belief system to limit my rights as a person and as a woman. Your right to murder children in the womb. Whatever your beliefs, you cannot impose your beliefs on the millions and millions of women that live in the United States. You can be pro-life. That is your choice. You cannot force anyone else to believe what you believe. Joe Biden is not pro-abortion. He's pro-choice. Pro-choice is pro-abortion. It's it's similar to uh, are you pro firearms or you're not or you're uh, pro choice. 
Nobody says I'm pro-choice when it comes to firearms. That's your choice. They say, no, I'm either pro-firearms, pro-Second Amendment, or I'm anti-Second Amendment. I'm anti-firearms. Pro-choice means pro-abortion. It's the same thing. It's synonymous. This nation was founded on the principles of individual freedom. Our beliefs should not limit anyone else's choice and rights to pursue whatever life they want. Every time you get an abortion, there is a child that doesn't even get to pursue life because you're taking that child's life. You disgusting hoe. Stop, stop spreading your legs. Keep them closed so that children don't have to die. I have no sympathy for people who... I have to be very specific in what I say here. I have no sympathy for people who on purpose kill their baby. Now, if, you are, if you're a woman who has had an abortion because you're forced to by an ab abusive husband or an abusive boyfriend, that's a little bit different because you're coaxed into it. You're forced to do it. But if you're one of these disgusting witches who gets an abortion and then wears a shirt that says, scream your abortion, and I've seen women who have had 12 abortions. I'm not even kidding. This isn't an exaggeration. I've seen this on Twitter. Women who are proud of the fact that they've had 12 abortions. You've murdered 12 babies. You disgusting wench. Nothing, nothing really pisses me off more than abortion. I'm, I'm so against that. Let's see. Cameron says, just started the video, but I believe a Christian can be a celebrity. The thing is, there is more temptation to sin and leave God out of your life. There are some who use Christ as a means to elevate themselves, while some glorify God with their talents and people's notice. There are also many Christians who forget where we started as child, as children of wrath. Yep. Um. Yeah, there's a lot of celebrity Christians, and I think they earnestly are trying to have a platform for Christ. Uh, a lot of people in my personal life know that I make these videos and I make these podcasts. It's funny. A lot of uh, people I know don't even listen. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's really just mostly online strangers who listen, which thank you so much. And support, too. Thank you so much. Um, but something I, I've always wanted to do with this platform is I just want whoever needs to hear this to hear it. That's my prayer every time I upload a video. It's just I don't care about the numbers. Whoever needs to hear it, I hope that they hear it. Rockin' Angel 3 says, I never listened to Kanye until he dropped his gospel album. I love his work and what he's standing for. Yeah, I think he's doing very well. The whole pro-life thing that he's on, it's great. Very good. All right, guys, that's about it. That's all I have for you. I hope you have a blessed Reformation Day, and I hope you have a happy Halloween. Uh, big thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Thank you so much for your dollars in my pocket. Money, 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 money. That's what I do it for. I lied. I do this for the money and fame and glory. Uh, but really, thank you guys so much. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and hit that rumble button. We're on rumble, baby. We're on rumble. If you haven't already, please join the Discord. Thank you so much for watching. I love all of you. Have a blessed day. I will see you all later. Bye-bye.